Hello friends. Welcome back. I'm Ramon. How are you today? In today's video, we are keeping it rolling. We're doing another sunscreen review. Today we're going to be testing out the True Sika Mineral 100 Calming Sunscreen. This is by Sun By Me. And this I actually heard of because of James Welsh here on YouTube. Um, he did a review of this and similar to what everyone was kind of saying about the Claire sunscreen that I tested on my channel. Go check out that video. A lot of claims about this being a mineral only sunscreen filter, non-nano based UV filters that leaves no white cast. So we're gonna test that out today. Before we get into today's video, I'm gonna ask that you hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you know when I post any of my sunscreen reviews, because that's literally all I do anymore. Hit that thumbs up so I know that you still like these videos. And in the comments down below, have you tried this? Do you like it? Or what else would you like me to try? You guys are giving me really great sunscreen recommendations. I have a couple great ones on order slash already here that I'm going to be testing over the next couple months. So stay tuned for that. And before we get into it, I also wanna say, channel still pro black pro black lives matter pro black women pro black trans and queer folks so links are going to be down below to continuously keep donating to these organizations i strongly urge you set up a regularly occurring payment every month to support local organizations that are supporting the black community and doing work with queer youth and black women as well also when you're at it go stream ungodly hour by chloe and holly do yourself a favor Trust. So, Chusika. Again, I heard this on James Welch's channel. I ordered this. Actually, no, I didn't order this. Um, I got this at a local Korean beauty boutique here in Chicago called Chuk Chuk. Go check it out. But you can get this Anya style as well. This ranges anywhere from $10 to $15, so super affordable, for 50 mil. Really affordable, in my opinion. SPF 50 plus, PA plus plus plus, non nano mineral sunscreen filter, great for photo aging, safe for sensitive skin, which we'll get to in the follow up, smooth and quick dry solution, great for photo aging, as well as brightening, super lightweight. They really boast really, really high UV protection, UVA and UVB, contains 85% moisturizing essence, mild ingredients, no artificial color, no artificial fragrance, which we'll also get to. Yeah, and they really boast that so this is just like a really great high protection sunscreen that's going to be good for all skin types. So I'm going to be putting this on. Today's going to be light skincare, light makeup. I'm going to work, but the subsequent days I'm going to be altering the amount of skincare underneath as well as the makeup on top of, and then doing a day where I just do only the sunscreen by itself so you can see it. Then I'm going to be testing the four Bs, how the sunscreen wears with a beard, if it beads, does it wear well with makeup, and is it brown skin friendly? So stick around. So we're back. And it's day four of our review of the Sun By Me Trusica Mineral 100 Calming Sun Cream. I'm conflicted on this, let's be honest. Before we get into the final thoughts, let me talk about the days of application and testing and kind of tell you what each day was and what kind of day of thoughts were. I just want to like preface that by saying every day I apply, and it's something I've never mentioned in other videos, but I've mentioned in my sunscreen related videos, is I measure out quarter teaspoon and apply that to my face. And then considering how bad the white cast is, I'll apply it to my neck and my ears as well. On top of that, every time I apply, I do wait five minutes afterward just to make sure it all sets and I get that nice film before I go in and apply makeup on top just to make sure that the sunscreen is forming the protective barrier it needs to form. For day one, I went in and I did simple skincare, simple makeup. That was my first day really testing the sunscreen, how it wore and whatnot. As you can see in the initial application of day one with the white cast versus no white cast, it's minimal, if I'm gonna be honest. I've gotten off a trend of really bad white cast sunscreen. So for me, this was actually kind of minimal, but texture wise, it clung really badly to facial hair and it had a little bit of a pilling texture situation. I'm gonna be honest in saying the texture of this is really interesting to me. It is very jelly-like, linear you know, like the jelly highlighters that were like really popping like a year or two ago, but it dries down to a very natural finish, but it has some of the pilling issues I noticed from Pareto Comfy Water. Day two, full skincare routine. I'm talking hydrators, moisturizers, creams, serums underneath, a very simple beat. No texture issues with this in the skincare underneath it. In terms of makeup going on top of it, makeup wears really smoothly on top of this, I found most days. But if I have dry skin, like it always happens in the middle of my forehead, I always have texture issues but also like around my eyes, this does cling. That being said, it forms a really great texture for makeup. Makeup wears really well on type of this. And this is like really, really lightweight. It dries down again to a really nice natural finish. It's not too greasy. It doesn't affect the makeup in any way. It doesn't affect the undertone in any way. Day three, simple skincare, full beat, full coverage, matte, powders, creams, primer. I applied that day with a BB cushion and I found, I mean, I also avoided my beard pretty actively, but the BB cushion helps to kind of blend things into the hairline a lot better when it comes to mineral sunscreen filters reduce a good majority of texture then the full beat work like beautifully on top of it you can see in the footage i didn't have any issues with that and we were out and about on a really hot day and all things considered i mean more standard oiliness happened my check-in was actually like 10 or 11 hours into the wear test and i was like mad oily and i had kind of the standard breaking down but what i will say is and it happens for a lot of mineral sunscreens where you get that weird buildup and you're like 
nasal folds. I had a weird product collecting there. Like do with that what you will. But I mean, eyelid wise and under eye wise, like minimal to no creasing. And then today's day four. Today's no makeup, only skincare, just so you can see how the sunscreen wears on bare skin. And on top of that, I did a three hour reapplication. Application, beautiful. Genuinely very surprised. There was, I mean, you'll see on the footage, in my opinion, there's no white cast. If anything, there's a subtle tone up. But that being said, it did collect in my facial hair and that's something that's really noticeable. And there was some, a little bit of texture peeling around my eyes. With the reapplication, as you can see, minimal tone up. There's still not really a white cast, but that's when you start getting weird texture in the hairline. I do a really good amount of sunscreen when it comes to the reapplication and around my eyes, it starts getting a little bit pilly and a little bit textured. It starts collecting a lot more in my mustache. The mustache is a really big problem area. I don't know if you can see, I have a lot of weird subtle pilling and whiteness around my eyes right now and up in like this part of my forehead. So that's where we come to the final thoughts on this and like, what do I think about this sunscreen? Let's go through the four B's real quick, give my opinions. I'm gonna get into the ingredients list of this and the claims and then we'll get into like is it worth it four b's beard it collects in your facial hair i'll be real with you that's kind of a given and it's not even just in the beard or the hairline it's like up in my eyebrows i can't get rid of that and then up here in my mustache as with awesome screens it's really hard to get rid of the white cast in the beard i refound my glossier boy brow so i was able to hide a lot of the stuff in my eyebrow my mustache but I'm not about to take boy bra all up in my beard to try to get rid of all that. So beading, it doesn't necessarily pill with skincare necessarily. It just, this texture of it, especially if you agitate it and rub it too much, I find like it pills on its own. When I did just the BB cushion, I had none of that. And I find the more it dries down and the more I like rub my face, that's when I get really pilly and with reapplication. So I don't necessarily think it beads, I just think it's really finicky. Beats, makeup works really well on top of this, I'll be real. It's super lightweight, sets down really natural, so it doesn't really affect the makeup that goes on top of it, doesn't affect the coloring of it, doesn't really affect the wear of it. If anything, my under eyes are really smooth for a long time. And then brown skin friendly, that's the big question mark. Again, as you can see in some of the footage, especially when I focus the application with a BB cushion, I feel like I get a lot of the white cast to go away and it becomes a minimal to non-existent tone up. The concern becomes when I start going in with a cushion puff, a lot of product collects on the actual cushion and then I wonder, am I getting that protection on my face still or is it all rubbing off on this? And when I do this, I can literally go like this and get like product off of it. So that's a big question mark for me. And I mentioned BB cushions are my favorite for reapplication. For some people it's not, but also for regular applications, some people don't have these and some people don't like these. So then it becomes how feasible is that gonna be for most people? And then on deep skin, this might be a little bit less of a subtle tone up and it might be a little bit more substantial. So factor that in. In terms of the ingredient list, the whole claim behind this is it's calming sun cream and it really advertises having the Sika benefits, which is until Asiatica. It mentions having non-nano zinc, titanium dioxide, which considering it's non-nano and I have very minimal to no white cast that's actually really good all things considered and again i'm coming off a train of really bad sunscreen so i'm like huh you know glass half full and it also has tea tree in it tea tree is kind of an anti-acne thing tea tree is an essential oil that does show some promise of being really good for acne but can be irritating for some but beyond that it features some not some not cute ingredients namely it has lavender essential oil it has limonene and linalool which are other citrus essential oils and i think it also has like orange peel extract and those are actually like those are irritants for the skin for sensitive skin people i know a lot of clients as before who would be like i can't do citrus extracts it really irritates my skin. And so is this that good for sensitive skin? I don't think so. And that's like a big claim for this. It's great for sensitive skin. And just because you have physical sunscreen filters doesn't automatically make the sunscreen great for sensitive skin types, especially when you factor in botanical extracts like that. So that's kind of like a, uh, that being said, this is 50 mil. It's like $10. That's affordable. Considering the Verse sunscreen was $20 for the same amount. That's affordable. And I'm looking at a uh, yes sale right now is $9. I got this at Chuk Chuk, which is a really cute little Korean beauty boutique here in Chicago. I paid for like $12 for this, so even still really affordable, but it is alcohol free. And it also features niacinamide and adenosine, which are also really great skin barrier repairing ingredients, really soothing, redness and inflammation reducing ingredients. It has glycerin, which is super hydrating. So you have to really figure out in weighing the ingredients, are the good ones enough to outweigh the bad ones? I'm not sensitive to essential oils, and I know there's a prospect that they can be irritating down the line, but when it comes to sunscreens, especially people looking for specific things out of formulations, and for the most part, the formula works, so it's kind of has some bad things. You have to really consider then, does it have the right benefits to warrant using the essential oils? So is this Ramon approved? 
I'm gonna say yes, but it's like a soft yes. It's good for me. I'm avoid my beard. There's a YouTuber I rediscovered recently. His name is Rotten Skin, who he tests a lot of physical sunscreens too. He is Indian, has nice rich brown skin like I do. His trick for a lot of it is he'll use chemical filters in his beard just to reduce any likelihood of pilling and uh, catching in his beard. And then he puts the physical sunscreen on his actual skin, neck and ears, which is something I might actually do with this just because I actually like the formula a decent amount. I could work with a lot of this. It's a lot of times just the beard. Would I wear this by itself? Yes, but I would not reapply with this. And that's where the big caveat is. But I have my whole video on sunscreen reapplication, so I have other alternatives that I'd prefer. So this actually would be a decent base layer. All things considered, really high SPF and PA value considering it's mineral only filters that are non nano. So there's a lot of really great things about this sunscreen. If the essential oils aren't gonna bug you, I would actually like recommend copying this, see what you think about it, trying it out. If you have deeper skin, tread lightly, but if you can see my application footage, what the white cast look like, and you feel like it, is worth trying out for you, give it a shot. It's literally only $10. To me, it actually has a lot of ingredients that I like and trust, so I'm actually, I'm gonna actually recommend this. So yeah, is it worth it? I think so. So give it a shot. Um, this was a great recommendation by James Welsh. So shout out to James. Thank you for recommending this. I'm gonna keep trying it out and keep wearing it. If that was a good review and you found it useful, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so that you know when I post more sunscreen content, which is pretty much all the time on this channel. Have you tried the sunscreen out? Let me know in the comments down below. Do you want to try it out? Do you not like it and don't want to try it out? Tell me why. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. Bye.